when the founder of the Achaemenid Empire, Cyrus. <gasps> this is guys. This a lot of a lot of Persians just jizzed right now. Okay, every time every time Cyrus is mentioned, a lot of Iranians just jizz in their pants. The great freed the Jews from Babylon. He not only showed the world. This is like, this is like there. If you okay for a lot of Iranians, insulting this guy is kind of like blasphemy. Okay. So they get, but if anybody says anything bad against Cyrus for a lot of like nationalist Iranians, they get the same feeling that Muslims get if you insult Muhammad. Okay, so this is kind of like their Muhammad. He's from Babylon. He not so yeah, and the Bible mentions him. The Old Testament mentions him because um, he's the guy that. Okay, so the Old Testament because it's so obsessed with the Jays. The children of Abraham, the Israelites. I'm not going to say the J word because YouTube is that YouTube algorithm is moronic. Um, but so when he, this guy Cyrus, when he invaded Babylon, he, this guy was the first human rights advocate for some reason. He was like multiculturalism. Everybody gets to practice their own religion. Everybody gets to live wherever they want. I'm not going to force anybody to wait, live the way we live. Okay. So like the Cyrus Cylinder. That's like the first human rights declaration, recorded human rights declaration in history. It was like a full on multi multiculturalism. It started with this guy. Okay. Um, so when he invaded Babylon, he told everybody in Babylon, like, hey, you know, these these Babylonians, mofos, they they forced you to live here. You get to go back to your homeland now. So the Jews were like, we good to go back to Israel? And like, yeah, you get to go back to Israel. In fact, I'm going to help you rebuild your temples if you guys. And they went back to Israel, right? That was uh, the first exile was done because of this guy, right? This guy is famous. This guy is a famous character in the Old Testament, okay? But it was even more famous for other, you know, Iranians, right? So, but when the Old Testament, um, when they wrote about him, they said that he 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 freed the Jews. Oh, I said it. I said the Jays. God damn it, he freed the Jays, but. As if it was something special about them that he freed. And they said, like, yeah, it was Yahweh. Yahweh came to him and said, like, oh, free the Jays. But he freed everybody. It wasn't the Jays that he freed. He told everybody, you get to go home now. But when the Jays were reporting on this incident, he was like, yeah, he freed us. And it was because Yahweh said, right? So there are three different versions of this story, okay? Who told Cyrus to let the, everybody go home? Did Jay say it was Yahweh? But if you read Cyrus, Cyrus's cylinder, which is in London right now, which I actually, oh, I recorded myself reviewing that. I should release that video. God damn it. Yeah, I explained the situation. I went to London, the British Museum in London, and I saw, I, I explained to the camera what I was looking at. So I should release that video on Ideas Unbox. Go check out Ideas Unbox YouTube channel. Um, but on that cylinder, it was written in the Babylonian's language, and it mentions their god, right? And he himself was probably Zoroastrian, so he didn't believe in neither Yahweh or the Babylonian's god. So he himself probably thought Ahura Mazda directs him. So everybody gets their own version of who told Cyrus to do what he did. Um, let me see what you guys say. Wow, Ikram saying, man, Ar Armin, he looks like you. The, you, there is some resemblance. Any Hollywood role, Cyrus? <laughs> okay, no. Um, let me see if there's anybody butthurt over me talking crap about. You should simply refer to Jays, Christians, and Muslims as monotheist is clean. No, because sometimes I want to just refer to the Jays. I, I say children of Abraham. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. It, I thought, okay, all right, he deserves some respect. He deserves respect. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty ahead of his time when it comes to human rights and multiculturalism and stuff like that. So, But he still invaded people and killed a whole bunch of people, so there's that. Um, Oh, Blue Fox is saying you can anger Iranians by saying Cyrus isn't Persian ethnically. Hmm. That's a version of blasphemy that I could use. We'll see. Is that true, though? Not only showed the world the religious tolerance that Zoroastrian rulers would become known for, but he changed world history at the same time. 
For freeing the Jews, Cyrus was praised as a messiah in the book of Isaiah. This meant that Jewish thinkers were obviously quite receptive to Zoroastrians and Zoroastrian ideas. It is Yeah, and so the Jews liked Zoroastrians. I said the J word again. God damn it. Um, and also the Greeks, who were, who were the enemy of Zoroastrians, still respected Cyrus. There was which was this? What was this book that that talk that Greeks wrote about Zeros, um, about Cyrus, and then the founding fathers of the United States read learn about Cyrus through that Greek book about Cyrus, and some of the ideas, some of the some of the values that Cyrus had, if affected some of the founding fathers of the United States. Yeah. Was it Jefferson that told his son to study Cyrus? What, which one of the founding fathers was it? But yeah, they used the Greek books. The Greek books that wrote about the Persians, which were the enemies. The Persians were the enemies, but they still wrote highly of Cyrus. That's how much they liked them. Idea of Cyrus making up with Alexander. Wow, <laughs> Terrell is saying I should make a cartoon of Cyrus and Alexander making out. I know Alexander was bi, so that would be in line, in line with his character. I mean, I think everybody might have been bi by, at that time. I'm not sure. Is in that book of Isaiah. Oh, thank you, Terrell, for the super chat. That's very sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At Yahweh is for the first time spoken of as a single guys do you know that term writing on the wall writing on the wall that comes from cyrus that comes from cyrus because the babylonian king this is a biblical story right the, yeah this is in the old testament when the, when cyrus was invading was coming to invade babylon and free the jays the king in babylon Yahweh wrote on the wall that something. It wrote on the wall that is that you're you're about to get your ass handed to you. <laughs> I think that was on the oh yeah, because what th that was at the 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 story is that is this in the uh, old testament or is this like more of a Talmud thing? Um but what happened was that the kings of Babylon were having a party and they were insulting the Jays by taking all the stuff from the temple uh, and drinking drinking wine in it and having food in it so it was meant to be like all the you know uh i don't know the cups and whatever what that was meant to be used for temple usage they were insulting the jays by using it for their party for drinking alcohol and you know other stuff with it and while they were doing that and the and the jays were captive in babylon um they see the right Yahweh's hands shows up and the, there's a writing there's a beautiful art actually of this exactly I've, I have a video of me next to this art in London that I am going to release as well um, and basically God writes on the wall that yeah you guys you guys times you, you guys are going Cyrus are going to come and you guys are effed right and that's where the term writing on the wall comes from right let me see if I could show you that art hold on Writing. I don't know what that. Oh my god! I don't know what to search for. What is the name of that? Something. But this is weird. Oh, there we go. We found it. I found it for you guys. Don't don't tell me. I do. You know, see, I do great things. I I bring you guys so much interesting information. Don't aren't you grateful? Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? This is what happened, right? So King Belshazzar of Babylon uh, takes sacred golden and silver vessels from the Jewish temple in Jerusalem by his predecessor. Uh, oh, this is the guy that did actually the invasion of the Jays. Nebuchadnezzar. I don't. I never can say this guy's name. It's a biblical name. Using these holy items, the king and his court praise the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. Immediately, the disembodied fingers of a human hand appear uh, and write on the wall of the royal palace the words, 
mean mean me tickle or I don't know what this means. What does those words mean? The very night. Okay, so that's that's the very night that they get invaded by the Persians. Hold on. Yes. It was the the Persian Cyrus the Great invades them, right? And this is they got the warning right here on the wall. So this is where the writing on the wall comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's where the matrix name comes from as well. Um, Ikram is saying current Iranian state of mind forced Islam is uh, in seventh century and blending it with Zoroastrians, you get a confused version of Shia. I don't know if that's true. I've seen that a lot of people claim that. I don't think that is accurate. Katie saying Jesus, my uh, no guys, don't distract me. I'm just going to leave this on the screen if you guys want to see the book of Isaiah. This meant that Jewish thinkers were obviously quite receptive to Zoroastrians and Zoroastrian ideas. It is in that book of Isaiah that Yahweh is for the first time spoken of as a single creator God, like Ahura Mazda. Hmm. The Abrahamic religions... Oh yes, but, but guys, but this is also, you see this guy writing, this J guy writing? This is, he probably, this is, he probably, you know, I, I told you that the Jays, okay, the Jays originally, the Jewish religion originally didn't have heaven and hell. But later on in their history, they start playing around with the idea of heaven and hell. And guess what? This is when they were being romantically in in love with the Zoroastrians as well. So they were like, they were like, oh my God, we love Zoroastrians. Zoroastrians are so great to us. Look, they saved us. So they fell in love with Zoroastrians, and they also started talking about heaven and hell. So this is why it gives me the impression that they probably got their a lot of their ideas um, from Zoroastrians. And also, this is also around the time that this, the Bible, the Old Testament starts changing and the other gods become less and less important and Yahweh starts becoming the one and only true God, just like Zoroastrians have only one main uh, powerful God. So it's very possible that the other gods becoming not, big, not that big of a deal was also because of the influence of Zoroastrians on the Jays. And eventually the Jays' religion is what led to Christianity and Islam, right? So this is this guy, this guy, this is the real footage of Abrahamic religion becoming influenced by Zoroastrians. everything you learned about God in and heaven and hell in Abrahamic in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. It was because of this dude be getting a having a hard on for Zoroastrians and trying to like copy some of their ideas and Zoroastrian ideas. It is in that book of Isaiah that Yahweh is for the first time spoken of as a single creator God, like Ahura Mazda. The Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam right. owe a lot to Zoroastrianism, because while Zoroaster's teachings don't sound too revolutionary today, ideas like one all-powerful God, a cosmic ah. battle between a loving God and their satanic nemesis, angels and archangels, right. a heavenly judgment that places a person in heaven or hell, and a final cataclysmic judgment that would purify the world and bring about the kingdom of God, where the good will live in eternal paradise, which is a Persian word, were all brand new ideas at that time. This means... Guys, this means that we all, that the Persians came up with all of this crap. I apologize for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam on behalf. This was all our fault. It was us. We cursed the entire world with these crappy ideas. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was my people. It was my ancestors. I mean, they're, they're interesting, though, as stories. Lee is saying, the Jays who return from Persia are called Prussian, but in English, Phrase, uh, English phrases who bring heaven, heaven and hell to the Old Testament. Hmm, I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to leave it on the screen for people who, who maybe could understand. Is that while small today, Zoroastrianism has influenced the most sacred beliefs of billions of people. Even George R. R. Martin 
borrowed some Zoroastrian <gasps> thought to make his religions in a song of ice and fire. And I, uh, I knew it! I knew it! And guys, I didn't know this for a fact, but when I was watching Game of Thrones, every time the fire, word, fire god showed up, the god of light, and the prayers and the rituals, I was like, every time I was like, is this Zoroastrianism? <laughs> I didn't. I, I. I. never checked. I always thought like he probably got this from Zoroastrianism. So Islam got his idea from Zoroastrianism. Christianity and Judaism got his ideas from Zoroastrianism. And Game of Thrones got his idea from Zoroastrianism as well. So now you know what Game of Thrones and Islam have in common. They both come from Zoroastrianism. No, guy, Matteo, that's not that has never been proven. Russian man Salman Farsi made up Islam. Yeah, no, no, Salman Farsi theory is uh, is fake. It's not true. There's no proof for that. Okay, here. The far oh Pharisees, Pharisees. Oh, Pharisees are Jays. Um, oh, okay, sorry, I said phrase. Are Jays released from the per uh, from Persia? Uh, uh, to oh sorry, I, I misread that. To go back to Israel and the heaven, they heavily influenced the five books of Moses with heaven and hell. Yes, yes. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. As you can see here, Lord of Light is is based in part on on a couple of the dualist religions that actually existed in our world. One of them, the huh? Zoroaster, uh, Zor at I can never say that. Zoroastrianism. Wow, so he actually got it from Zoroastrianism. And look, his he's having a tongue twist with Zoroastrianism. So it's not me that even 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 authors and well-known writers, uh, you know, somebody that has to deal with English so much, even him, his tongue is twisting over certain words. So I feel less bad now every time I'm having a tongue twist. This is actually the main highlight of this today's episode, that, that I don't feel bad anymore every time I can't pronounce a word. Zoroastrian. Yeah, whatever that is. Yes, 